What's up, best friends? It is the Zero Trust version of Mr. Clean, AKA Brian Deach on the screen. I think that rhymed, oh well, that's kind of weird. So today we're gonna to be talking around healthcare, specifically around uh, remote radiology. So come over here, remote radiology. Man, it seems like a long word, but it really isn't. And at the end of the day, the person's smiling. They might not be smiling with you, but after you implement Zscaler, you will. And it's going to be the whole narrative around if it's remote, it's, it's work from anywhere. So Starbucks, abroad, uh, working from home. And what are these users doing when they're trying to do their job? At the end of the day, it's not a wet read. We're trying to, we're trying to do diagnostic type of reads. And how do you do that with legacy technology? It's kind of simple. You probably have VPN. I'm going to try my best not to badmouth it too much today, but I'm not a huge fan. So as we switch gears this a little bit, where do the radiologist applications actually live? And that's simple. Back over here at your data center. And maybe you have one data center. Maybe you have multiple. Maybe you're trying to do cloud first. It doesn't really matter. I, I got your back, right? I support everything. So you come over here. We got the big bad data center and you're specifically looking at those PAX programs that are out there. And I would say it's, you know, the usual suspects behind the scenes, right? It's the, the GEs of the world. These are all great partners. Uh, Siemens, uh, Philips as well. If your provider's not on here, uh, rest assured, it's still gonna work. And uh, if you have a VPN client on this side of the picture, that means you have a, a VPN concentrator over here. And that's a negative thing because if you have a device that's sitting on the internet, waiting for people to connect to it, if it's reachable, it's breachable. I said it once, I'll say it a thousand times, but whatever. We're trying to make their lives better and convince you that the Z-Scare way of doing things is, 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 is it. So let's look at this. So. First and foremost, uh, the remote radiologist, what do they have to do? Well, they have to remember they have to turn their VPN on. So they do that. Uh, they come over here throughout the world. Maybe this particular uh, user is, I don't know, in, in California, you know, staring at the sunset. Maybe the data center is in New York City. Maybe it's not, it doesn't really matter. But they turn on the VPN and what happens? Like, all of the traffic that they're trying to use in the world is most of the time coming back here to the data center and then going out. As you can tell, like the application lives there, so that, that's okay. But like what happens when you're tunneling all the traffic for that particular user for like the internet, all the way back over here? And what if you're doing it for like SaaS based applications as well? Like it's just kind of a recipe for disaster. So we'll come over here and say SaaS. But really what happens is that you're starting to create some unnecessary choke points. And the choke points aren't limited in just one direction. So the first one is gonna be around your VPN concentrator. Like how much traffic can that actually move? Are you backhauling it? Some of you right now are watching this video like, well, that's why we do split tunnel. Well, if you're doing split tunnel, like it's, it's putting a bandaid on the gunshot wound. Like you're fixing one problem, but you're introducing other challenges or additional endpoint security that probably doesn't need to be there. The second one is as you start doing full tunnel or split tunnel, that stuff, you're creating a choke point right here. So if I have a user, they're like on Cox communication internet and they have like 300 meg internet circuit. And this thing has been configured to all tails, right? Maybe the maximum throughput on that is like 20 megs per second. Now you're like, oh, that's still pretty quick, right? Not really, because like, let's look at the nature of what that user is trying to do. You know, when it comes to transporting traffic, VPN is like the equivalency of like a uh, covered wagon back in the, the old west, right? And so we look at this graph and say, hey, you know what? You have file sizes that are in, in the megabytes range going all the way over here to like gigs. So as this remote radiologist is coming through doing their job, maybe it's like the low hanging fruit. They're coming over here. It's, a, it's like an ultrasound, not that big of a file. Okay, that's manageable on 20 megs. 
then you switch gears, you're like, oh, you know, what about like a, an MRI? You know, that's moving into the, the megs, like hundreds of megs, you know, getting close to, to gigs, right? And then you come over here and like, oh, well, we know, we also have CT scans. And that's getting even closer. Some of these things could be definitely in the gigs. And then all the way up over into the world of, uh, I think, fluoroscopy is what it's called. We'll go F-L-U-R-O for short. And what's going on with that? that? Those are literally gigs in size. So if you look at this, now this user is using a shared internet connection that's kind of maxed out. Even though I can go 300 miles per hour, I can only do 20. I'm taking all of my traffic for all of my PAC systems and the internet and SAS and bringing it back over here. It's a recipe for disaster. It starts to make that end user experience start to suck. And how does that really impact the business? If I'm spending like 30 minutes waiting for a file to download, right? That's a lot of time wasted. And so from a Zscar perspective, we don't bend light any differently, but what we do is we steer it completely differently and start to introduce ways to optimize the connection. So let's look at this. Anything in blue is gonna be Zscare and specifically how we enhance this. So first and foremost, we enter in the Zero Trust Exchange, ZTE for short. And yes, you don't have to be a doctor to understand, Zero Trust can actually benefit you right here. So first and foremost, this endpoint agent nonsense from VPN, gross, yucky, that goes away. One less endpoint to have to worry about there. This liability in your life, this device that's sitting there waiting for the entire internet to come in and attack it, I'm gonna turn that off. We don't need to have that anymore. So what I do is I have a lightweight agent for your remote radiologist called Zscare Client Connector. And the way that this works is that you're going to see me draw kind of a single line right here. But the reality is, is I'm going to have multiple lines coming from my, my client. And in this connection that can move 300 megs per second, I'm going to get you those 300 megs per second come hell or high water. So I'm not going to hairpin a user back to a data center when they're going out to a SaaS based application. In fact, I'll use one of my 150 points of presence to steer that user to the closest one. Same thing with the internet. Going back to the data center, ooh, gross, that's yucky. I don't wanna do yucky, dumb things. And then when this user is trying to pull an application, they're trying to do a, a, an actual diagnostic read uh, for one of your, your patients, I get rid of VPN, which means I don't have users on the network. I get rid of your attack surface. I stop lateral movement. And the way that I do things is completely different. I'm not a crazy person allowing things to just listen and come in. Instead, my device reaches outbound to the Zero Trust Exchange. It's not reachable, it's not breachable, it's completely dark. Then it just has application adjacency. So now as this user or users is coming through saying, hey, get me this PAC system, I wanna to talk to it. I can take this over here. I can max out that 300 meg connection or 250 or whatever it is. I do a micro tunnel back over here and get the best overall user experience for them. Furthermore, troubleshooting this is a simple portion of our platform. Think about how long it takes you today to troubleshoot someone on VPN that's complaining about stuff. Like, I don't need to bet, uh, you know, beat a dead horse, but what you need to know is that I am monitoring the connection to your applications every single hop of the way from the endpoint to Wi-Fi to local ISP to the Zero Trust Exchange. I monitor over here. I monitor over here. I monitor over here and lastly on this side as well. So if there's a problem, that meantime the resolution will be much quicker. And now when I take this all into account, if we go back to the original use case, increasing user experience for the uh, remote re radiologist. Let's say you have 10 people that work seven days a week. If I diminish that, that 30 minute download for every single read and I get them a net one additional read per user per day, that would be 
roughly 3,650 scans in an entire year. We're over here in pre increasing productivity. And what does that really mean to you? When we look at the entire platform, I'm gonna give a better overall user experience. Your users that are doing their job, heck, even when they're, they're you know, reaching out to the SaaS application, it's gonna be a better overall, overall user experience. From a troubleshooting standpoint, that mean time to resolution, that mean time to innocence is gonna go from a day, a week, a month, to just a matter of minutes. We're going to reduce your attack surface by leveraging the Zero Trust Exchange. Get rid of these crazy things, pull them out. Reduce that lateral movement. And last but not least, right, we're here to increase productivity. And maybe that means that you can hire more people at the end of the day. Maybe that can help you uh, innovate, growth in other areas of the company. But more importantly, maybe you're gonna start to save even more lives. So with that said, team, hopefully you got something out of this today. I, I personally would like to talk to you about this in further depth, but thank you for watching. Leave a comment, like, subscribe, find me on LinkedIn. I appreciate you and I'm out.